Yeah, and, and let me ask you about growth at Merck and in the industry. There's some worry out there that, in fact, you're going to see the pipeline slow down. You're not going to see the R&D that we saw in past years, that we're at a moment in time in terms of cyclicality that the growth is slowing within healthcare. You say? Well, Merck has always been committed to R&D, and we're very pleased that we're at a point in the cycle now where we're introducing a lot of really important products in areas like hepatitis C, in areas like diabetes, in areas like cancer. Our new drug for cancer, Keytruda, is really a life-changing drug. Yeah, w w tell me about that, because you said when we first sat down, we are at a pivotal point in terms of cancer. Well, yes. So with immunotherapies, we can target drugs to the kinds of precise genetic defects that cause cancer. And we've seen with our Keytruda drug that we can help people who are newly diagnosed patients with non-small cell lung cancer. We actually have a drug that can help many of those people and avoid years of pain and hospitalizations and surgeries and radiation and chemotherapy. It's a breakthrough. And we've seen in other tumor types that this drug can actually stimulate the body's immune system to attack different kinds of tumors. So the bottom line is this appears to be the first broad spectrum agent against multiple tumor types and multiple malignancies. Will we see a cure to lung cancer? Well, the word cure is a strong one, but for individuals whose cancer goes away, I think it feels like a cure to them. Wow. So, so you think that we are seeing a real change when it relates to lung cancer or other cancers? What? Absolutely. This is a revolutionary change, and it's just, we're just scratching the surface of this whole immune system solution to cancer. Yeah, I want to ask you about Alzheimer's as well, because you just told me a stunning statistic when we were during the commercial break. I know you're working on drugs uh, as well in the Alzheimer's space. Tell us what you just, tell the audience what you just told me in terms of the likelihood of getting Alzheimer's in our lifetime. Well, if you live to be age 65, you have essentially a one in three chance of getting Alzheimer's. 65 is one in nine chance? One in three. Oh, so it's one in nine chance, exactly. 65 years old. Right. And at 85, you have a one in three chance right. of getting Alzheimer's or that form of dementia. So this is an incredible tsunami that's hitting our society, given the fact that people are living longer. And what we need is a drug that slows down the death of the neurons, slows down the dementia process. Uh, do we have it? Well, we have a drug uh, that we're actually going to get data on in the middle of 2017. It's called a base inhibitor. And what we know from human genetic studies is if you have lower levels of base, you're much less likely to have dementia. So we're very encouraged. It's in a population of people who already have Alzheimer's. And then behind it in 2019, we have a study of people who are sort of pre-Alzheimer's patients. We have high hopes for it. The world needs it. Ken, this is incredible. I mean, that's a lot of people. If you live to 65 years old, one in nine chance you'll get Alzheimer's. Yes. And you live to 85, one in three chance. And we all hope to do that, right? Of course. We're all living longer as well. So there's that. Got to ask you about soaring drug prices. Obviously, last year, the soaring price of Mylan's EpiPen was all the talk, becoming a household topic, receiving congressional scrutiny. What is the answer to these soaring drug prices? Well, first of all, I think when you look at something like the EpiPen, it's important to remember this industry is not monolithic. There are certain companies that buy drugs and, and raise the prices of those existing drugs for the populations that they treat. And then there are other companies like Merck that actually spend a significant amount of money on R&D trying to come up with drugs like drugs for Alzheimer's that haven't existed before. So our approach is we try to be responsible in, in drug pricing. So what does that mean? We're trying to optimize, on the one hand, patient accessibility to the drug and on the other hand make sure that we have a sufficient return on invested capital so that our investors continue to allow us to have the capital to go after the next important disease. Ken, when I came to your headquarters last year or maybe a year and a half ago actually we talked about uh, acquisitions and we talked about growth through deals and I said to you would you be in the market right now for a deal on biotech you said not at these prices. Now. Prices have come down quite a bit. It's uh, looking good out there. Are you looking at a biotech deal potentially? Well, we're looking across the whole spectrum of opportunities. And for us, the key is that we have to get the right assets at the right valuations. And so while the, the prices of some of these companies has come down, that doesn't necessarily mean that the boards of those companies feel that that's the right place where they want to actually strike a deal. But we're active. We know it's important for us to augment our pipeline, and we're going to continue to do that. So, I mean, you, you, you do have to do a deal in terms of getting growth stronger. Well, I think a deal can help drive growth. I don't think we have to do a deal. We're not desperate to do a deal. We're very pleased with the 
assets that we have in our pipeline and drugs like Keytruda, but we also need to augment our pipeline. Where does growth come from at Merck next five years? I think cancer is the biggest area. I think you can see growth in diabetes. You're going to see growth in places like hepatitis C across our portfolio, vaccines, and also the important work that we're doing with antimicrobial diseases. Should, should investors be worried about patent expirations, about competition you'll see in 2018 for some of those key drugs? Well, we're losing two important drugs this year, and we still feel confident about how we can weather that patent expiry. All right, we will leave it there. Ken, great to see you. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk with you. Ken Frazier, CEO at Merck. We'll be